our addictions and your addictions serve you. And I'm not talking about addictions of drinking, drug abuse. I'm talking about a whole lot more than that. And it's really important because most people don't know they're addicted to a whole lot of things. We are addicted to a lot that we don't even consider in our day-to-day -day life. And can we ultimately figure out how to let our addictions be positive or negative? And one of them is our addiction to knee-jerk reactions. Like, we can just make really quick decisions. So let's take, uh, let's take social media, for example. You can see somebody's post and all of a sudden, screw you, you know, all of a sudden, without even understanding the entire conversation or take it all out of context. Like, that, can, that happens all the time. We see it all the time. So do we act before we think? A lot of us are so addicted to just acting without thinking that to actually think kind of hurts our brain and we're addicted to not hurting our brain. <laughs> we don't want to do it. We just don't want to do it. So if somebody offends your religion or your lack of religion or your politics or lack of politics, do you instantly just jump up with the old, I'm addicted to F you. I mean, I, I was addicted to telling people to, you know, screw off for a long, long time. And that little sliver of my own personality pops up all the time. And I got to catch it. Me and Andrew, my good buddy, we, we were just talking about this before we started. I've been addicted to that knee-jerk reaction, and it did not serve me very well. And so we need to ask ourselves, how are our addictions, what are they achieving? How are they serving us? Are we addicted to yourself at the neglect of others you know is it so important that you go you know watch that thing on tv and then neglect your wife is it so important that you need to go do something else and neglect your husband or your friend or do we put ourselves so much or so higher than everybody else that we my thoughts are more important than yours what i want to do is more important than what you want to do I want everything for me and absolutely nothing for you. Like, is that, it's an addiction. We're addicted to ourself. I'm better than you, so screw off. It's a fact. How about this? I mean, are you addicted to harmful sex? I mean, everybody loves sex. Like, sex is great. But I found this, I was reading this porn sites. This is so amazing to me. Porn sites, especially the, uh, the top two, which was they said it was Pornhub and some other one. Uh, they get more visitors than Netflix, Amazon, and Twitter combined. That's a lot. <laughs> I mean, that is crazy. So obviously, there are a lot of people addicted to porn. And then what kind? Of, what does that do to your intimacy with your loved one or your partner? Like, what sort of images are you playing around in your head whenever sudden, you know, you're supposed to be romantic? You know, your, your wife or boyfriend think you're being, you know, this wonderful romantic, but in your head, you're thinking about, you know, all this other crazy stuff. I saw a, uh, it, it was really funny because, it was not really funny. I was having a conversation with somebody, uh, oh God, I don't know, this might have been six or eight months ago. And the guy lost his virginity. And he said, the first thing that happened, he goes, I was so nervous. I was sitting in the room and, and we're, we're kind of making out and I didn't know what to do. And uh, I kept thinking in my head, when's everybody else going to show up? You know, because he's all he's done is watch porn. <laughs> yeah, he's waiting for it. Like, is anybody else going to come in? <laughs> Where are they? I mean, he was kind of joking, but he was also really being serious because that's the only thing he knew. Like, so how are, how are these addictions serving us in our mind, spirit, and body and with our intimacy with, with others? How about that? Like, are you addicted to not listening? Like, how many people, and probably like, I don't know, maybe half of the people at that table are not listening. They're, they're pretending to listen, but right behind their eyes, they're like, I don't really care what the hell you're saying. You know, and you can kind of feel that when you're talking to somebody. Sometimes you can feel it when you're talking to Chuck because he'll have to interrupt you because you know he's not, you know he's not uh, listening to you. 
Yeah, but what does that reinforce to yourself whenever you're just pretending to be a nice person and listen to somebody? Can you imagine if you're a therapist, you go in and spill out your guts and then, you know, they never even paid attention to you. He's thinking about his own problems. <laughs> and then he just gives you some arbitrary bull crap. You know, just go within, you know. <laughs> you know, whatever. It is something that we all are responsible for doing. We've all done that, but some people have turned it into an art form. And they're addicted to it because they don't really care. But how does that serve us? How does that addiction to doing these things? Now, we're not all addicted to these things, but each one of us are addicted to something on this slide, especially our morning routine. You know, what does your morning routine look like? We're addicted to our morning routine. Whatever that routine is, is pretty much the same. You know, you started off with coffee. Some people started off with tea. You know, do you drag yourself out of bed? You know, can you look, say a Saturday, noon, 12, you have lunch. Can you look back on your morning and go, did I allow my routine to serve me or not? Did my morning routine serve me in my life? Most people don't ask that question because we're just addicted to rolling through life without asking what the hell we're doing. You know, do you wake up like that? Do you frame your day like, oh yeah, let's go get this, boys. Let's go. We got it. Or do we do this crap? Like, oh God, I got to call that person. I got to take care of this. Oh, I got this catering gig. I got, you know, I got to do, oh crap. Oh God, Bonnie's like, oh, I got to get out of my comfort zone and talk to somebody. You know what I mean? You're like, what? You know, that's how you frame your day. That is an addiction. We're addicted to either getting up like that or getting up like that. So how do you, how do you make that work for you? You know, what are you doing? Can you look at it before you go to bed? You know, when I wake up in the morning, what am I going to do different? How am I going to make my addictions, my routine serve me? You know, can I take a walk? Can I meditate? Can I read a couple of pages of something? Can I text an old friend? You know, do I even set intentions? Do I say, hey, I'm going to wake up the, tomorrow morning and I'm going to do X, Y, and Z because I know that's what I need to do. I know my fat ass needs to go take a walk. You know, I need, you know whatever it is. Do you? No, because you, most people don't because they're addicted to the same routine and they don't want to break it because it's uncomfortable. It requires doing it again and again and again until it becomes the addiction that serves you. I mean, are you addicted to praise? I know a lot of people that only do good stuff for other people because they say, woo, look at that guy, look at that girl. They are so nice, they are so good. They, they did that stuff for those other people, they give them some money or they do this or that. Those are just the sweetest people, but all those sweet people, all they want to hear is, oh, I'm so sweet. I'm such a good person. I am just so friendly. Everybody just loves me. And really, you don't give a crap about any of those people. You just want people to talk good about you because you did something for somebody. Like, you really could care less about helping them. You just want everybody else to go, man, that Antoine's a nice guy. And Andrew might be, <laughs> Antoine might be going, oh, I, don't know, I really didn't care about him, but thanks for the, you know? It's, it's, it's kind of strange, right? How about all these dopamine hits from social media? You can't go anywhere without seeing that. Everywhere. Somebody has to post something to get somebody's attention. What voids are we trying to fill by just posting crap all the time? Like, please, look at me. Look at me. I need to be seen. That's, that's how people, that's how we're spending our lives. I mean, you see people at a restaurant and they're sitting at the same table texting each other. You're like, what, like, like, what are you doing? Like, like, it's just, it's unbelievable. How does that behavior serve us? How does the, how do those addictions and dopamine hits serve us? How do we, uh, the addiction to our mental state of mind? Some people are just, we think they're naturally miserable. And they don't want to be happy because they're uncomfortable being happy. They're so addicted to that emotional state that anything that threatens what they've grown accustomed to and what they're addicted to, they don't want any part of it. Don't you mess with my addiction of being a, a miserable ass. Like that, that's what you're addicted to. You're addicted to that feeling. Don't you change my feeling. Don't you do it. Don't make me laugh when I want to be pissed off. You know, how do those things serve you? How do you recognize them? What are you doing to see them? Man, 
We let our emotional life control us, right? We just act out of emotion. You know, do you ask questions just out of fear, anger, irritation? Do you? Do you just respond like that? They said what? I mean, how many times? How many times have you sent a text to somebody, and then you come to find out later they perceived your text as being totally rude or inappropriate? Whenever you had a totally different intention. Like your intent was, I'm being nice and friendly, and they read it, and they're like, I hate that. You got, you, you, that's just, do you act with your emotions? Instead of knowing for sure if that person was being rude or not. How many times have we screwed up and made ourselves uh, do that without considering all the information? Because, you know, for some reason, we all think we know just about everything. Nobody knows more than me. And, you know, if Bonnie tells me something else, well, Bonnie is wrong. You know, th that is, uh, we, a lot of us are addicted to that sort of feeling. Where we won't even listen to other ideas or other thought processes because we allow our emotions to instantly take over. It's not something we do all the time, but a lot of us do it a lot. I used to do it a whole lot. You know, are you addicted to handling problems the exact same way every time? You know, if your wife comes in and you, you uh, yell at her to grab you a beer, you're on the couch and she says, you know, you, do you, and she comes in rude, do you always handle the problem all the same way? Do you not say, hey, you know, you're kind of being rude. I'm sorry, I was being too bossy by asking you to get me a beer in a rude way. You know, do we just let all of these um, problems never get resolved and continuously get compounded and made worse because we address everything the exact same way. I mean, what did Einstein say? Uh, I forget exactly. Yeah, you do the same thing over and over again. Isn't that the sign of insanity? You're yeah, expecting a different result, however the heck he said it. Are you addicted to being like uh, the center? I think we are all are responsible for this a lot of times. You know, I'm so self-absorbed. I like to think of it this way. like. Would anybody want to be my friend? Would anybody want to be my friend? I mean, I think we can. All, we all know people that when we see them, we can go, I don't think anybody wants to be their friend. I don't think anybody wants to be their friend because all they can do is talk about themselves. All they can do is, oh, pity me, poor me. Oh, God, the world's on. Oh, everything's so bad. Uh, you know, it's a good way to catch yourself is to go, you know, would somebody want to be my friend? Am I the kind of friend that somebody else would want? Maybe you can catch yourself from being a self-centered ass because we all do it. There's no exceptions about that. And are you addicted to interrupting others, Chuck? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it, it's, a big, it's a big problem because we can do this a lot. Um, and we're, again, we're all addicted to it because instantly we think, oh, my thought is so important. I have to stop that other person and tell them exactly right now what I'm thinking. I'm so addicted to being heard. You better hear me and see me. I catch myself doing it all the time. I mean, not near as bad as Chuck, but I mean, pretty damn a lot, you know? Well, yeah, you know, not less. Well, of course it is. It's important. It's important. You know, what we're really telling the other person is, you know, I really don't care what you have to say. I don't care about anything. I don't care what you're thinking. I don't care. I am more important than you. I'm addicted to myself. I'm a, such a self-centered ass. I don't care what you're saying. That's what we're telling people. Every time we interrupt them, it's pretty rude. How about this? Are you just addicted? I mean, how many of us know people that are addicted to the tell a vision? It's called tell a vision for a reason. They're telling you what to think with their programming. And, you know, do we binge watch? Because, you know, it relaxes me. I get to escape from my life. You know, do we sit home and we want romance or love in our life, but instead of turning to our spouse, we go, I just want to watch the notebook one more time. You know, so we live vicariously through that movie instead of just going, Man, I got a spouse right here. I could hold her hand. I, my, your wife could go, oh, let's just take a walk. and do, How about just hug me? How about just a kiss? But instead, you let your spouse, a girlfriend, boyfriend, they go off and do something else and you put in the notebook. You don't even try. You just live vicariously through other things. Is that, how does that serve you? How does that improve your life? Does it? 
And how about um, th this one really gets to me because it really won't hurt. I hear that all the time. You know, this little dessert ain't gonna hurt. It's good for you, but my grandma gave me cookies. You know, this is okay. Oh, I made this with love. It is no problem until you get cancer, until all of a sudden you are destroying your organs. Oh, it's okay. Just one more bite. You know, it's just, it's nothing. It's not going to hurt you right now. So many other things can kill you. You know what I mean? What are we really saying to ourselves? Like, we don't really care? You know, is grandma like, grandma, have you really thought about that? No, we, we, not in this country. No, you'll be ostracized. You'll be, no, you got to be out of shape and miserable like everybody else. Or all of a sudden, you're not going to have any friends because all of a sudden you are in shape. And I've been really irritated about it because, you know, I go travel and did some stuff and then I'm eating piles of tiramisu. And I'm just like, what am I doing? You know, all of a sudden, my fat jeans are tight. You know, and now I'm, I'm pretty happy because now my fat jeans are starting to get loose so I can go back to my regular jeans. It's, uh, but what am I, I'm, I'm getting irritated at myself. I'm like, dude, like, you know what you're doing. Like, you're not as sexy as you were, you know, when you get out of that shower. We can look at ourselves and go, really? Do I really want that other poison cookie? Do I? No, you don't. No, you don't. You know, we're a lot, a lot of us are addicted to uh, bodily neglect. A lot. You know, we'd rather sit on the couch than doing Tai Chi, stretching taking a little walk, working out. You know, how are we serving ourselves? How are we sitting on that couch eating GMO chips serving us? How? All of a sudden we have all these diseases that are proliferating like mad. We're like the most sick country in the world, mentally and physically. Why? Why are we doing this to ourselves? Why are we addicted to this behavior? Why? Especially this. People don't read much anymore. I just don't. Oh, it bores me. Oh, God. Documentaries put me to sleep. Oh, I don't want to know anything. Oh, God. It's so boring. Liz, everything's so boring. Without any intellectual curiosity. Wow. Talk about a uh, Socratic uh, question of <laughs> is your life worth living? Because there's so much knowledge and things you need to know in your interactions with others to achieve any goal. I don't know. Maybe you'd rather watch Netflix. I don't know. And are we addicted to our random thoughts? Yeah. I mean, how many times have we all, so many of us, especially some of y'all here, you know, when you start to meditate, you know, you just get all these random thoughts come in. You want to quiet your mind. We try to fight them. But, you know, don't fight them. Get, get some gratitude. Hey, thanks. I appreciate you showing up, random thought. Just love it. And then eventually, you know, it'll kind of go away. But then you can start setting the course of how you want your own thoughts. You can be the captain of your ship. You can decide what you want to do or not do instead of just randomness dictating and controlling your life. You can steer who the hell you are. We don't have to just cross our fingers like this guy. Oh God, I hope I get that raise. I hope someone hires me. I hope that business deal goes through. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. Hope takes action. If you want something to happen, you got to take some action. You gotta do a lot of action. You don't necessarily have to fight and swim upstream. You still gotta do something. You still gotta get your ass off that couch. You got to. It's pretty important. I know a lot of people like this. I have, actually I have a brother like this. He cannot be alone. He has to be with everybody. Cannot sit by himself at all. He either has to have something on his phone, something to, he has to be playing a game. If he's not playing a game, if nobody's around him, he has to go find somebody to be around. He's just nonstop like that. Man, does that serve you? It, not having a curious mind, just I got to do, do everything at all at once. Oh, there's a concert. I got to go to that concert. Before that concert, I got to go to this thing. Oh, and then after the concert, I'm going to go meet my friends over there. Like there's no... You're, you're so wound up, you just can't love yourself. You just can't go, why can't I just take a step back and go, ah. why can't I be good to myself? How about this? Anybody know any of these people? Probably got some of them here. I got to have a pill for everything. I got to have a pill for everything. We just forget all of the ancient practices that have been successful. My mother being a very 
prime and perfect example of doctors saying she's going to die and she does the exact same opposite thing they say and she cured herself. That is miracles, if you will, right in front of our eyes and we just believe Big Pharma because, you know, they don't have a reason to uh, make us want to take their stuff. <laughs> no reason there. Right? I mean, are we that dumb where we think, you know, man, I'm really got high anxiety. I better go get a pill for that. Oh, golly, I really am depressed. I better go get a pill for that. I really, you know, in some cases it's needed. Some people just can't do it on their own. Like some people need that, whatever. Some medicine is really great. A lot of it's not. A lot of people have the power inside of themselves to heal themselves, to cure their anxieties, to cure their depression. We got all of these powers. We're like superheroes. Each one of us are a superhero. And Jill's my Wonder Woman. Howdy. I'm glad you're paying attention. Are you addicted to substance abuse? Huh? Give me, you know, we got a couple of people in this audience that are struggling with this. It makes me feel good. It makes me feel calm. It makes me easy. I can, you know, people like me more. <laughs> well, in case you didn't know, when you're a drunk, nobody likes you more. When you're screwed up on, uh, some kind of drug, you think you're awesome in the life of the party. Nobody wants to be around your stupid ass. <laughs> I mean, it's just a fact. Nobody. So what are you addicted to? How is it serving you? Are you addicted to harming the earth? You know, we all say, oh, I want to be good stewards. Oh, climate change, blah, blah, blah. But I'll buy all the plastic bottles of water. I'll get my orange juice in a plastic bottle. I'll just do all the stupid crap that does nothing of what I believe, of people say they believe in. Oh, I'm a, but I'm, I really like that. I, but you got choices. You see there are some cardboard options. But no, most people just grab the plastic. They like to use uh, the weed killers. They like to... What is it? Uh, is it a roundup? One of the largest settlements in human history, knowingly causing cancer and other harm. So what do we do? We want to kill our weeds. So let's just go get some more of that. Let's go do that. What the hell's wrong with all of our addictions? And we're addicted to being told how to think. You know, if you are, this is true in almost every case. If you're a Republican, you listen to Republican echo chamber news. If you're a Democrat, you listen to Democratic echo chamber news. There's a little bit of truth in both sides. Just a little. But the truth lies nowhere on either one of those sides. Because everybody has their own agenda and they're trying to sell you how to think. They need to be able to count on you to be stupid. They need to tell you how to think. My dad's a prime example of this. He thinks every one of his thoughts are his own, and he is nothing but Republican, oh God, y'all know what I was about to say, and I got a tongue tied, regurgitated. He just spits it out. And then I have a bunch of Democratic friends, they do the same thing. I'm like, do y'all have an original thought at all? Jill does. We got five minutes left. <laughs> My preacher pastor and guru or spiritual leader tells me how to think. You know, I'm Baptist because, and I feel this way because my Baptist preacher told me so. I'm Catholic and I believe it's totally fine to take over the Native Indians, Mount Graham and have a big, saddle, a big telescope called Lucifer sitting on top of it. I just, it, because, you know, the Pope said it was good. You know, so, <laughs> amen, brother. That's what I think because they told me that. They told me it was okay to do that. Kick off those stupid Native Americans. They don't know what they're doing. Huh? We're the Catholic Church. We'll put the Lucifer telescope up. You know what I mean? It's just a, uh, it's a wild set of things we're addicted to. It's wild. And how do they serve us? Are we addicted to our ego? Can we actually even look at ourselves? Because it's hard. Like, it hurts. When you start thinking about it, what routines am I doing? Oh, you mean when I am drunk, people don't like me? They don't. Should I question... Is my mom or daddy going to be mad at me because I was questioning this religion? Oh my God, am I going to be ostracized? Oh golly, am I thinking for myself? Oh, I don't think so. That makes me uncomfortable. Now how about this? Are you addicted to being separated? 
Like we have a big separation problem in this country just from mother nature. You know, people taking off their shoes like I am now and just go walking in the grass. Go laying down and looking up at the stars at night. Not very many kids do that. Not very many adults do either. There are universal energies all around us, and that's just a fact. We know that every molecule from the smallest thing under our feet to the largest cosmos, there is energy flowing in and amongst us everywhere, and no scientist can understand what consciousness is, where it springs from, how it comes into being, where all the energy is to move everything. Nobody under, no, nobody, no, nobody. Not your preacher, pastor, guru, no scientist. They just know it all moves, it all works, and things happen. But I know through my own meditation, I don't believe it, I know it, you can connect to the energies around you. I can connect to all of y'all. Y'all all have y'all's own energy, and y'all connect with me all the time. And I love y'all. We need to connect. We need to stop sending out these feelings of... Uh, BS, the separation that exists and needs to go away. Just to ask yourselves every day, what addictions? What am I doing? What are my steady routines that I'm doing? Are they serving me in a positive way? Am I taking the time to meditate just to connect to Mother Nature and to these universal energies? Because they exist. Just choose your addictions wisely. Just choose them wisely. If this resonated with any of y'all watching, then come out. Come see us. It's important that we have groups of trusted people and trusted friends. We need that now in this world more than ever, and we're achieving it here one Sunday at a time. And you're welcome to come fish, play games, watch documentaries, whatever. Thanks. We'll see you next time.